Okay, now that you've got your settings properly configured for the single and batch lister, I'm going to show you how to list your item, you list your first single lister item. So on the left hand side in the navigation area, you're going to click on single lister. And then you will load a product URL or an ASIN number. With Amazon, you can either just use the ASIN number like this or you can use the full product URL. Just be sure that you're capturing the URL ending at the ASIN. Every supplier is different, but what you don't want is all this referral information and garbage at the end of the URL. It just messes things up. So you want a clean URL or an ASIN number. So paste that in, select your country that you're listing in, hit add new item. All right, so number one, you're gonna have settings that are automatically filled in. They're going to be collapsed, but if you want to take a look at them to see if you want to edit anything, you can hit show more. What that's going to do is going to open up and show you your seller profiles. If you want to change anything, like change your handling time, etc., um, you can pick a different profile here. If you need to change your returns or your payment method, you can change that here. You can also change the duration of the listing, any of these options. All right, um, so pretty much I'm going to leave everything how it is right now. If you wanted to change the category, you can change the category number here or select a different category from the drop down if one is available. All right, and then these are your other um, options here if you did not um, use business policies. And you'll scroll down, you'll have your category specifics. So you'll enter in the type, if you know the color, uh, you know this is black. Um, you can enter the material. I think it's acrylic. Acrylic. You know, and you can add custom item specifics if you would like to. You would just hit enter the name. So I could say use, and I'll just say spinning makeup organizer all right your dimensions your product weight and dimensions will be filled in automatically if they are known from the information from the supplier if not you can enter them if you would like your shipping service um, eBay started kicking this out so you want to make sure that you have shipping service one and two set they should be identical because eBay is kicking out the first shipping service uh, which I have set at UPS ground and a zero cost and free shipping, yes. All right, and you'll notice that the same is set here for shipping service too. Now, if you use business policies, this is irrelevant. Um, it's only needed for those who are not using business policies. All right, and you'll scroll down to step number two, which are your item settings. If there is a variation, the variation would be here. You could select the variation from the drop down. Um, however, um, with Amazon items, you're not going to be using variations. Just make sure to use the correct ASIN number for that particular item. Your default quantity here is already set and pulled in from your settings. The brand name and UPC are filled in if they are known. So you can change this if you want um, so that your item stands apart from everybody else's. You can change this information out. So I can say uh, swivel makeup organizer all right and if you already purchased UPC codes from Hydra and you want to insert one if it's already in here you can just click use UPC from the pool if there was no UPC code from the supplier it would have automatically inserted it for you you also have the option to buy more UPC codes or if you have your own UPC codes you can fill that in yourself the MPN you can change it up or leave it the same. It's totally up to you. All right, and your price. Right now it's going based off of the current supplier price and your default formula. If you want this item to be priced differently than using your default formula, you would click override price. All right, the first thing that you can do, if you are eligible to use strike through pricing, then you can enter a larger selling cost here that will display as a retail price with a line drawn through it in your listing that will give the appearance that the item is on sale. 
if if you're not eligible you'll find that out once you go to submit the listing not every seller is eligible okay there are a couple different ways to override your item you can set a fixed price now if you set a fixed price like let's say I want to list this at 199.99 setting a fixed price causes uh, SKUgrid, if you're using SKUgrid, to ignore your formula settings and always keep the item at this price unless the item, um, I'm sorry, even if the supplier price increases or decreases, your price will never change from this fixed price. So use this with caution. Only use this if you never want your price to change. All right. So I'm going to leave that blank and we're going to go ahead and use the wizard values down here. Now, if I wanted this item to, let's say, have a $10 profit margin, I could change that and work in dollar amounts, or I can work in percentages. If I wanted this to have a 10% profit margin, I would take out the fixed margin, leave the minimum margin here, um, and have the PayPal fees, and everything is still filled in from your default setting. So you work with the profit margins however you see fit. You want to change manual override to no, definitely, um, because if you have it set to yes, then um, your your formula here that, that's created will be ignored and it's only going to look for a long formula to be written out by you. All right, so then you can test the formula. So I know the supplier cost is $139, so I will enter $139 here and hit OK. It will price my item at $189.51. All right, based on these settings. If you change your mind and decide, hey, I don't want to override this item anymore, you can click reset to settings and it will reset back to your default formula. Okay, totally up to you. And you also have ability in step number three to change your title. So right here, I can see if I start changing things around, I'll see that this title is extremely long. So I will have to change it up, otherwise it will not post to eBay. eBay does not let you list more than 80 characters. So if your title is extremely long, you want to definitely shorten it, taking out any irrelevant words or redundant words. Let's see. Oh boy, this is, this is a lot. <laughs> take out these numbers nobody's going to search for that all right so now we have a title that is 80 characters or less you'll notice that while it was over the character limit the um, title box was red and it was showing me that the title was too long once I'm 80 characters or under it goes back to being black you know that that title is within the listing requirements you can click update in description that will update the title anywhere the title tag was placed within your template you also have ability to define a different main image. You can edit these images. You can also select items or images and have them not included in your listing. So right here, because this has a whole bunch of words on here, I probably don't want this in the listing. So I'm going to uncheck it. Um, you also have ability. I will take this image, for example, and click the pencil icon. This allows me to edit the image. Once it loads, you can click orientation and then hit this mirror button here to flip it across a vertical axis that rotates it. You also have ability to use any of these editing options that you would like. Uh, another feature that people will like is the ability to add text. So a box will appear and you can type in your store name or whatever language you want. And this will serve as like a watermark on your image and you can drag this wherever you want it to go and even resize it by dragging this little slider. All 
my mouse won't cooperate. So, yeah, so you can drag it in to make it smaller and then move it. All right, once you're done making changes to the image, hit apply and save. Okay, so now the image has been rotated and edited. You also have ability to rename the image. So I can say black makeup organizer, whatever it is you want to rename it to and click OK. You have, if you click the star button, that changes it and makes an image, a different image, the main image. Okay, so that moved it over here to the main image spot. You'll also notice that wherever the image tag was within your listing, it has also changed my main image here. All right, you go down a bit further, you can edit the listing, however you see fit, edit your description. All right, so you can edit your description Make sure everything looks good. I'm probably going to take all this stuff out. Take this out. When you get into these uh, FBA items through Amazon, they tend to put a lot of um, information that is specific to Amazon and or the seller. So I don't want that into, in the listing. And that's it. You just come down and click list item. Okay, once your item has listed, the screen will tell you that it processed the item and that the item was listed and it will be exported to SKUGrid within 15 minutes if you are using SKUGrid. If you're a business policy user, you will see this warning about a payment method being added because you have PayPal selected. That's fine, just ignore that warning message. All right, and your item will appear on your item list. You'll notice that the supplier URL will be here. If the link is too long, just click the more link right under it and you'll be able to copy and paste it if you need to. Um, you'll also be able to jump. This is a clickable link that takes you directly to your eBay listing. You'll see the country for the platform that you listed on. The status of the item will show listed. It will say yes, it was exported to SKU Grid if it was, and it will have the date that it was listed. And that's how you list your first item with Hydro Lister.